Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. So let's get started. Uh, the topic for today is creating uh, Swift Y uh, container views. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm super excited to be here in so well organized event. Um, so let's give a big applause to Josefina, Facu, Cynthia, and everyone who organized this event. A quick, uh, before I started talking about container use, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Martin Barreto. I'm from Rivera, a city in the north of Uruguay, particularly in the borderline uh, Brazil uh, Uruguay. I got into iOS developer, de development about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, I created several open source projects, uh, such, such as Eureka a very popular for builder, um, action controller, page of the view, which is the um, open source we gonna cover today. So that's it. A quick re review of the agenda for today. Uh, in order to build this custom container views in SwiftUI, we need to know what is a container view. Then we gonna introduce the page of the view open source library that we created in, with the small lab team in Uruguay. It's an open source pro project. Uh, and finally, we're going to go over all the cha challenges we faced uh, during the, the development process of this library. So what actually is a container view? Uh, a container view is nothing else than a view that displays and arranges other views in the screen. Uh, arrange other views in the screen means uh, set up it, its position and its size, basically propose a size. Um, for example, Apple uh, already provides several container views. Here is a tab view for those that are already impl implemented uh, in Swift Y. This is a tab view. It's a um, state driven declarative framework uh, where we can basically provide the views that, that we want to appear on each tab and we get this, uh, this information. Um, for the page of the development, basically we, we use the same approach, the declarative approach, to create this, this open source library. So, uh, what is page of the view? The easiest way to, to know what it is, basically, is uh, taking a look at some um, interface created by the library. Here we have three different UI creating using the, the, the library. We can see that uh, page type still provides um, multiple styles, uh, especially the second one uh, is ideal when we have multiple pages in, in, in the control. And uh, we can customize this uh, style uh, and reach the, the last one, for example, that is super custom uh, behavior. Every, every iOS, every iOS uh, app basically use this, ty this type of, of control. Uh, I'm basically using this uh, library. We can reach any one of them. The view hierarchy of the library, basically the developer provides the pages that are these six pages that appear on the screen. These pages are added inside, inside a lazy horizontal stack. Uh, lazy, lazy horizontal stack provides uh, great performance, especially when we have a large amount of pages. Then we have the tabbar item. The tabbar item basically is a view associated with the page that uh, whenever the user tap it, basically the selected page changes. Um, and these uh, tabbar items are uh, added inside the uh, scroll view. And lastly, we have uh, the indicator view. The indicator view basically indicates the selected page and updates uh, on content offset uh, changes. The code on the left basically creates this uh, page view. We only have to provide um, the view for each page. In this case, we are providing a, a color. Um, Swift Y treats this as a, as a view, which is a hack. And then we have to uh, configure the, um, the tabbar item 
associated with this page. In this case, it's just a text with the same color as the page. We can easily change this behavior using the page at Street View style modifier. In this case, we are changing the, the, the style to, to use a scrollable bar button and providing another um, indicator view. In this case, it's, it's a circle and uh, animating this, uh, this indicator view forever, uh, changing the color uh, from the last one to the actual one, to the current one. Okay. So far, we, we know what is a, is a container view, what is the, the, the library, what the library does, and so on. Now, I want to share with you guys the, the challenge we face during the, the, the library development. First one is uh, we need to arrange the views in the Y, uh, the position and the size of each view in the, in the library basically depends on several variables, several states, the content offset, the selected tab, and probably the, the parent that, that grabs this, this library. So we have to arrange this, this view. And SwiftUI provides uh, several techniques. But before that, it's important to understand uh, the, how the layout system of, of SwiftUI works. Basically, um, it's different from YKit. In, in YKit, each parent uh, set, set up the, the size and the frame of, of, of each children. In SwiftUI, each view is responsible for setting its own size and placing the child uh, inside uh, its, own, uh, its own view, basically. So the process that, that, the, that, the, that the, the engine uh, follows is these three, three steps, basically. Uh, parent propose a size for the ch child. The child chooses its own size. And finally, the parent view places its child in, the, in its own view, basically. So this is far uh, from the YKit approach. So the, the, the first technique to, to place uh, views on, on the screen is using a geometry reader. It's super useful to, to do so. Basically, this, this view is designed to report its container view size to the subviews. So for example, in the example below, we are grabbing each page inside a, a geometry reader in order to update the width of the page according to the parent width, just by using the geometry reader uh, view. This provides a geometry proxy that contains the size and the, and the width. Another example is this. Basically, um, we need we, we need to know the position of each page. The developer provides the pages. Uh, in SwiftUI, it's a declarative way to, to provide these pages so we can have for each or, or reorder these tabs or delete some pages and so on. So uh, we keep watching basically the frame of each page. And whenever this change, we have the show Mr. reader that, that uh, provides the frame of, of each page. And whenever this frame, changes, we basically uh, update a shared data um, and let the navigation bar on the top to update or keep in sync with the pages, basically. Another technique to arrange view in the Y is using the layout protocol. This is a, a feature that was just released by Apple in iOS 16. Uh, uh, we, we are really familiar with several uh, layout containers, uh, for example, lazy horizontal stack, grid, horizontal uh, vertical stack, and so on. All these uh, containers, like, containers you basically use this approach. It's an active approach to arrange view in the, in the screen. So um, basically, we use this technique to draw this, this, this view, where we have each tabar item and the indicator view. Each item is uh, associated with the page, so we need to know the information of the page and arrange this uh, indicator view accordingly the, the size of, of the tab item and also the, the content offset and so on. There are a, a lot of variables and states involved to, to draw this information. So what, what we need to, to do to create a, a custom layout, basically? Uh, first of all, is conforming to the layout protocol. It's a new feature. Then we have to implement the size that fits. 
method that basically returns the size that the parent need to uh, to draw the, the subuse according to the subuse size. And finally, we have to implement the place subuse. This receives as, as a parameter the sub, subuse uh, collection, which is a proxy of the views. It's not actually the view. It's a proxy of the view that has information um, about um, about the preference of a spacing, a preference of, of, of the size of the of, of the of the subuse, but you, it's not a, an extraction, not a, a view itself. And this is an example of how we can implement the place subview. Basically, we iterate over the collection of subview proxies. Then we ask for the uh, choose uh, uh, choice of, of the size of, of the subview. And, and then using the place at anchor proposal method, we can set up its position on the screen. And by doing that, basically, we are adding each tabbar item that appears on the top. And uh, for the sake of the, of the presentation, I, I, I'm not showing how I place the, the indicator view. The indicator view is, is more complex. The, the match operation involved to, to calculate the position and so on is, 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 is more complex. Um, then how, how we use it after implementing? Basically, uh, we use a, a layout, a custom layout uh, implementation as it was a, a view. Uh, Apple and SwiftUI automatically convert this uh, layout into a view uh, automatically. This is the, the this basically is the layout, uh, the, the layout implementation. Apple converts it automatically. Then um, we, we provide the subviews. In this case, the subviews are, are just the tabbar items that appear on the, that are shown on the top, and we also provide the indicator style. The indicator view, basically. There are some extra, uh, some extra information that, that we need to pass to the layout uh, and shine. Is the, uh, basically the content objects and the width of the parents. We need this information in, in order to properly uh, place the indicator view. So this, this, by using this modifier, we, we can pass this extra uh, information. OK, so this is how we arrange a view in the UI. We, in the library, we use more techniques, but just uh, to keep it simple, uh, I share this, this two. The another challenge, uh, I guess, is one of the biggest, is sharing the state among views. As I said, we have to uh, keep in sync the number of items that the user taps to select the, the pages with the pages, actually. The developer only provides the pages and the configuration for the tab, but uh, so I, I have to keep it, it in sync, basically. So for that, we declare a type that store that actually has an order item of, of the pages. Basically, it's only the, the, the tag information, the selected type. This property is published, basically, in order to let the views automatically update on each change. And uh, we also have a dictionary that uh, holds every page information, like the position and, the, for example, the tabbar item view that can be any view. So it's fully uh, customizable, this. So uh, we hold this information on the data, data item, basically. OK. So how we make this uh, data store available to all the views? Uh, first of all, the, the root view, which is the page tab history view, declares a, pro a state, prof uh, state object property in that store. Then this, this view, this root view, probably uh, share this information through calling the environment object uh, modifier. Basically, in this, in this point, we are sharing, all the, we are sharing uh, this information to all the views. And finally, any view in the, in the library can read this, this value by using the environment object uh, property. And then it's just we have to use. I already showed this, already shown this, this code. Basically, whenever, the, uh, whenever a page appears, disappears, or, or the frame of, of this, or the position of this page changes, I need to update this shared data in order to let the, the navigation bar to update, so 
uh, I'm using the, the, I read this value, data store, and update the, the, the data accordingly. Another example of using the, the shared data is um, when we want to create the, the, the navigation bar, the tabular items, basically we iterate over the order list of pages. Actually, our, our tags are, are tags, no, our, it's not, they are not uh, pages, are, are, are tags. Iterate over it and use it. So that's basically is all I have to share today. Uh, I invite you to uh, check out the code in, in GitHub repository. I'm also happy to answer any question you have. Hey guys, um, so we have a Slido to do some questions, but we don't have the slide right now. Uh, so if anyone has a question for Martin, uh, please ask and we can uh, get you a microphone. Does anyone have a question? Did you enjoy the talk or not? Okay. Okay, please raise your hand if you want to ask, uh, or we can go to the next speaker. Okay, we have a uh, one there. Okay, I'll go there. Sorry. Um, hello. Um, so, question. So, on the individual pages inside the pager tab, strip view, so can those keep state? Like say on the first page you navigated two levels down and then you move to the other page and come back, do they keep state like the individual pages? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, you can is, is each page is it works like in tab view basically. It's the same approach. Uh, if you keep the, the state in the, in the page, whenever you go back to the, to the page, you have the same state. Oh, okay, awesome. Any other question? Okay. I'll go there. Hi, uh, just a simple question. So can the tabs be at the bottom as well? Um, right now, uh, it's, it's impossible, but uh, it's easy to, to do the, this change in, in the code and, and do so. We can good. we can rotate all the screen, maybe using some modifier. <laughs> but it, it's super simple to implement this uh, changing the code. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any one? We have a, uh, one more question. If okay, cool. Um, did you mention that we can grab this view inside other containers? And my question is, for example, in Instagram layout, where you have like a header where you can see your profile, your followers, and then you have your tab view, but the whole screen is scrollable. Uh, we'll be able with uh, what we already have in, in pager tabs, three view, to accomplish a similar behavior where we can nest this component inside another container that also is scrollable? Yeah, good question. Um, we can combine this, this uh, library basically with this con container view with any other, navigation stack, tab bar, or whatever. And in regards with this, create a page that has scrolls and so on. This only depends on, on the page itself and not, not on, 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 the, on the page that's still view, basically. But we can compose uh, m multiple uh, containers used basically and use this in this composition. I, I don't know if I answered yeah. the question. But <laughs> I think so. Okay, cool. So let's give an applause uh, to Martin. Thank you.